So we did major renovation, moved in, then we picked away at the rest of the renovations, did the exterior, um, the windows, things like that. And then we went through the process of adding a basement apartment. Um, oh, so you added a third income. Yeah. So we added a third unit to the basement, which was, uh, we had to get proper zoning from the city. We had to go through a variance. And it took about a year to get that process done because technically my lot was only zoned for uh, for two units. So I kind of went through the vari variance process to get that done. It was a huge pain, to be honest, but it worked out in the end and we got approval. Um, so we did a major rent, rent out of the basement as well and out of the one bedroom apartment down there. So basically we have two bedrooms up top, two bedrooms in the middle and a one bedroom. So you're in the living, basement. you're not paying any real rent or mortgage for yourself. So we are good to go. Andrew, I never met you. This is, this is the first time meeting you. Five minutes ago. Five minutes ago. <laughs> so I was on social media in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Yeah. I was on looking around and you do some video. You're a real estate agent and I think you do income properties, stuff like that. Correct. Yeah. So I own a few of my own. Um, well, I own one of my own in my own personal house. Uh, I just got started a few years ago in that venture. And also I am a real estate agent in Halifax. I've been around it my whole life, um, but started selling real estate six years ago. And um, so, yeah, I'm excited to be here. And So the real question is, most people don't call me back. And you called <laughs> me back. <laughs> well, you sent me a message and it was uh, really vague. Like, you know, can you call me? So as a realtor, you're always like, you know, I kind of creeped your social media a little bit before I called you back. And I was like, well, you know, maybe it's a referral. Maybe it's a buy referral. I don't know. The guy flips yeah. houses. So you got you know. to tempt you. Exactly. Yeah. If you told yeah. me what it was about, you know, I probably still would have, I still would have called you back. But at the same time. Well, uh, you're here. The, it was the mysteriousness of it all. <laughs> I had to find out what it was all about. You were talking just before about doing video. Yeah. Correct. So we do a lot of uh, video for our listings in Halifax. Um, it's really, it seems really popular, especially with like my own sphere of influence and my client base. Um, I, it's to the point now where I run into, you know, friends of mine's parents from high school um, and they reach out to me and, and they see me in the grocery store and they're like, oh, we can't wait to get a video on our property. You know, this is whatever, one, two, three Main yeah, Street. Yeah. And they, they kind of go like that. And it's, it's just funny because it's kind of, you know, become a real big theme for us and a big uh, marketing aspect of our business. Isn't video fun and easy? It's super easy, right? To go it, in front of a camera? You know what it is. And it's one of those things that once you get... It is? You, know, you find it easy? I, it is easy if you let go of the oh. fact that it has to be perfect. So mm -hmm. when you when you start doing it, you're really nervous and you do a million takes and you're so, you know, you're so... It has to be perfect in your mind. And something that you realize is it's never going to be perfect. I'm not Leonardo DiCaprio and I never will be. So I'm not going to win any Oscars anytime soon. But I think that's what makes it so good is that it's raw. It's authentic. And, you know, and if you mess up, it's you have a good laugh about it. Then honestly, if, if I have a whole day of selling houses and part of that is a 45 minute uh, appointment with my videographer to film a listing video. Honestly, that 45 minutes is usually the funniest part of my day. And my videographer is awesome. He's really creative and just gets you laughing. And it's it's a really good time. And the people respond to that when it's real. Absolutely. The, the, I think so. The more well. screw ups you do and they like it. Yep, absolutely. So, you know, you have to get the information across properly, but it doesn't have to be, you know, line for yeah. line perfect the way you imagined it. If I, I, you're the same, you said when an agent asked you about video, I get a lot of questions about doing video and I'm the exact, you got just got to be yourself and you've got to practice. Yeah, absolutely. Put the camera at home, tape yourself doing everything and you're going to feel stupid, but eventually it just, what happens? Yeah. You just, you let go of it eventually. Right. And that, and that's when you get kind of the best, the best videos yeah. that we've done for our listings or some promo videos and stuff like that have been ones where we didn't, we had a rough idea of what we wanted to say, but we weren't really scripted. We just kind of you know, went with the flow. And the more you do that, the better you get at it too. And the more comfortable you get of being on camera and you being just followed around. You just got to do it. Absolutely. Just start doing it. You look like an idiot. People love it. Absolutely. You got to start somewhere. Let go. But that's not why we're here. Why we're here is because you do multi-unit purchasing, rentals, that sort of thing. Correct? Correct. Yeah. So that's what I want to talk. Well, first, Tell everybody who you are. Andrew Stevens. Andrew Stevens with a PH. So same problem you have with your last name. I've been saying my whole life. Yeah, I'm, I'm Andrew Stevens and Stevens with a PH. And I have to spell it out every time. So it's kind of frustrating, but it is what it is. So same well, thing with you with the Y and Bridges. I'd have a million fans, I think, if they would search BRY. <laughs> I think that's the confusion. They always search BRY instead of BRY. There you yeah, go. So every time I'm on the phone, yes, BRY. Why? Why? What? Where? D G. <laughs> It's, it's, it's complicated. So you are, how long have you been in the business? I've been in the business for six years. I've been around in my whole life. My I grew up following my dad around. He was a oh, your dad was an agent. He was an agent in Halifax and he's now a broker owner of the company I work for. 
um, which he started years ago. So I can remember being a kid looking forward to Sundays, following him around open houses. I had a briefcase with coloring books in it, his <laughs> old one. And um, I always I always joke he was the top producer for years and years. Yeah. I uh, did a lot of new construction as well, and I always joke around that I said, "Well, that's why I sold so many new construction houses because I was really cute in your open houses, and people, you know, fell in love with the family idea of being in that house." He owes you a referral. That's what I'm saying. So you exactly. go back to all those years, and you know, give him a break on it. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Because it, but you deserve a referral. Yeah, and now we work together. He's kind of back into the sales game oh, okay. the last couple of years, so it's kind of been it's kind of the opposite. I grew up following him around. Now he kind of follows me around, and I do most of the work. And I think he uh, he's owed that after years of, of doing it for me. So well, I can't get I can't uh, fault him because I have two daughters. I think they're oh man, isn't that terrible? 24, 22, 20, something like that. <laughs> and I brought I drug them to so many open houses. Yeah, and we had little games. Like we would play, we would actually <laughs> roll up a piece of paper yeah. and play like floor hockey, you know, somehow. And uh, in the basement, wherever, <laughs> until somebody pulled it, somebody pulled it, and the kids would sit there. <laughs> so if I ever did an open house for you like 20 years ago, that's what I was doing. That's hilarious. But I usually sold a house, but the kids, the kids helped. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, what talk to me about your first purchase because you're different. I'm not going to say anything, I don't want to say anything bad about. I guess the generation nowadays want it all right away. Yeah, absolutely. But you can't. Yeah. You can't have it all. So you can't have the perfect big house and all that. You got to build it. So what did you do? Yeah, so I started off uh, a few years ago. I bought a set of flats in Halifax. What's um, a set of flats? So over under style, you know, two story home with a apartment upstairs and an apartment okay. on the main floor. Um, so basically, it was a property. It needed a ton of work. Um, it was in a pretty good location, more of a main street, but. Um, a location that, you know, should grow in terms of, um, you know, value in the I area. I love downtown areas. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's close to downtown. It's close to the bridge, if you know Halifax at all. So it's it's kind of like a good central area on the peninsula in Halifax. Um, so I bought it. It needed a ton of work. I basically gut jobbed the main floor unit as soon as we bought it. Uh, then I moved in. And then we rented the upstairs flat. Um, so I bought it for, you know, 280000 I think, is what the price was. And basically, I got my tenants upstairs paying 1200 toward my mortgage, which is a huge chunk. And now I'm living in this new two-bedroom flat that's, you know, a really nice apartment at that point. I kind of picked away at yeah. the renovations did from you, there. Uh, did you get the renovation money for the bank? Did you refinancing after any? So part of it was some that I had saved up, but I also did like a mortgage plus improvements when I bought the house. So I bought the house and I think I got maybe 20,000 of mortgage plus, And then I had another, you know, 15 saved up in my own money and kind of did the major renovation at first, like the kitchen, bathroom, wall down, that kind of stuff. And then I picked away over the years of living there. We did the floors, we did, Who's uh, we? you know, the windows, um, me and my girlfriend, we lived together. Okay. Yeah. So you you did the, a lot of the work yourself? Uh, no. So I contracted most of it out, but obviously in the real estate industry, I have pretty good contacts of who I can use and stuff yeah. like that. Um, so yeah, it's just about using the right people and getting the right. Price so you on. had one rented. Yeah. One saw one the uh, one unit upstairs downstairs. Upstairs. Then yeah. you lived in the other one and you rent you renovated that. Correct. Yeah. So we did major renovation, moved in, then we picked away at the rest of the renovations, did the exterior, um, the windows, things like that. And then we went through the process of adding a basement apartment. Um, oh, so you added a third income. Yeah. So we added a third unit to the basement, which was, uh, we had to get proper zoning from the city. We had to go through a variance and it took about a year to get that process done because technically my lot was only zoned for uh, for two units. So I kind of went through the vari variance process to get that done. It was a huge pain to be honest, but it worked out in the end and we got approval. Um, so we did a major rent, rent out of the basement as well and out of the one bedroom apartment down there. So basically we have two bedrooms up top, two bedrooms in the middle and a one bedroom. So you're basement. living, you're not paying any real rent or mortgage for yourself. Yeah, absolutely. So I, at the, at the first, at first when we had the upstairs rented, we, um, you know, it wasn't a big cost to live there. Like the mortgage was maybe, you know, around 1200 and I was basically getting the mortgage money from the upstairs tenant. And then I was paying the taxes and the power, whatever. Yeah. Um, and they were on separate power meters as well. So the tenants paying their own power, which is great. Um, and then once we added the basement unit, technically I would have been living for free, but at the same time that we added the basement unit, I bought another property and moved, did a renovation and moved to that one. And now we had just have the whole triplex rented out. So if, uh, how are you, is it worth the sacrifice to deal with tenants? 
Yeah, absolutely. I, I think so personally. And I think um, I think the big mistake that people make with tenants is they don't screen them properly up front. Mm. Um, you know, a lot of people just they put an ad on Kijiji and they get somebody that shows up and they say, what do you do for work? And they say, oh, you know, I work for whoever. I work for the Chronicle Herald. I'm part of their marketing team. And they just sign the lease and they go. As yeah. opposed to, you really need to do your homework. You <laughs> then you got to find out the guy has read the Chronicle here. Yeah, once. <laughs> exa exactly. Exactly. So it's one of those things where you know you want to get references from people in terms of their job, in terms of their past landlords, um, and you want to do a credit check on them. It's as simple as that. If somebody's not paying their power bill, well, generally speaking, the next thing to go is probably their rent, right? So you want to make sure that that the credit check is good, and you want to screen them properly. And in my experience, it's worth it to be patient to get the right people, yeah. especially if they're living in a dwelling that you're living in. In your house, yeah. yeah. And in this case, they were living above me. So obviously, I asked some questions of like, oh, like, you know, do you guys go out drinking very much? Do you party much? And honestly, my tens are awesome. Um, they've been there since day one, basically. Yeah. And um, I hope they n I hope they never leave yeah. at this point. To be do you honest. own wooden clogs? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you, right. And when they're living above you, it's dancer. obviously a way yeah. bigger situation that you want to make sure you get the right person compared to if it's like a basement apartment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you a professional wrestler? <laughs> and do you practice at home? I had one guy show up actually, and he was like, "I was like, what do you do?" And he's like, "I'm a musician." And I was like, oh, "Okay." And I was like, "What <laughs> yeah. instrument do you play?" And he was like, "The drums." And I literally looked at him. I was like, I "I'll be honest with you. There's no way this it's is not, gonna, it's work. gonna work. It's just not gonna work." The only way the drums, guys. I I I just did a little thing today on social media. I always want to play the drums, and I can't. It's off topic, but it is they you almost need a sound room in the basement. Yeah, exactly. And even then, you can still hear. They're them for so sure. powerful. The drums. Exactly. You, you can hear them. Like neighbors will complain in their. You know, oh, yeah. covered in foam in the basement. So do you only own that one building? Yeah, so that one building. And then I bought a two-story house, single-family dwelling um, back in August. We did a renovation to that property and moved in in December. So now we rent out the whole triplex that we own, and then we live in our single-family Okay, family well, dwelling. that comes back to you can't have it all. Absolutely. Now you have the full family home. Yep. But you now you own the rental. You know how hard it is to get the full family home first and then get a rental? A lot harder. Okay? And the big part of that is the down payment, as you know. So that's the really nice part about doing it the way that I did it is you can go in 5% down. Um, you have somebody paying a big portion of your mortgage, so it's easier to save up money for your next house. Um, and then when you move on to the second one, you could do 5% down again. So you're not having to come up with, if I did it backwards, you're doing the two-story house first, and then you're buying an income property that you're not moving into at 20% down. And then obviously it's a lot harder to come up with that kind of cash, especially when your living expenses are are high in a house that you live in now. Yeah. Right? So in 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 really simple terms, if you want to buy the family home first, say it's a hundred grand, it's not. Yeah. You need technically five thousand dollars. Correct. So that's fairly easy to get the family home. Absolutely. But then if you want to go buy the duplex after yeah. and it's a hundred grand, you need twenty thousand. Absolutely. So if you buy the duplex first at 100 grand or the yeah. triplex whatever at 100 you only need 5000 exactly then after it's established running you can go buy your family home again absolutely at what at 5% 5 down 5% down right again. so you can have two mortgages that are default insured at one yes. time um, and obviously there's some other factors in there as well but in in generally speaking if you're not moving in it's 20% yeah. down um, and the nice part is now now i have the triplex which is cash flow positive because I got it for such a low price, put the money into it, and now the rents are high because it's a nice, yeah. they're all nice units. Um, and now that extra cash I make from the triplex goes towards paying for my house that I live in now. And to be honest, I wouldn't have bought the house that I bought um, without that income coming in because yeah. I wouldn't have wanted to pay the expenses on it. So it's a really nice way to kind of get what you want. It's more of a long-term plan. Well, that's it comes plan. with... The word sacrifice. Absolutely. You have to, you guys worked in dust a little bit. You lived yep. in dust some. You, you, it's not the Ritz and you're having everybody over partying in your place, but it, Absolutely. it pays off in the end. Yeah. And you know yeah. what? I'd be lying if I said it wasn't a pain. Oh, uh, it can it, be it, tough. It was, right? And there was times that I was ready to, you know, to bang my head against the wall. But at, at once it's all done, you kind of look back and you laugh at it about, you know, all the irritating things that happened and it works out in the end. And I'm a huge advocate of that. And I always try to get... Um, a lot of my like younger clients, you know, people who are so you're 20. teaching this. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So I try and get my clients who are in that 24 to 30 year old range to kind of buy a house with a basement apartment or kind of go that route and then try and, you know, tell them my story of how I'm set up now. And um, t it's like you said, a lot of the younger generation may not want that. They kind of want um, they want 
the nice house and they want everything right away. And I'll be honest, I'm, I'm one of those people sometimes too, right? Um, and it's something that if they could just look at the long-term picture and sacrifice for a few years, I think they could be set up a lot better when they're 30 as opposed to owning one property. They could own two or even more than that. And they're still saving money. Absolutely. So what are you going to do with the savings? Find a way to convince your heart and mind that I've owned 500 houses, probably more. Yep. I know it sounds, but I, I flip, right? Yep. I still have a rental in my house. Yep. I still have it. Yep. I have Absolutely. A, I, I can't help it because that money can go to traveling. Yep. So you sacrifice a little. Find a way to convince your heart that you can, that savings... Yeah. You can do this, go there, go y'all like all inclusive trips. Like you're paying for it. Yeah, that way. absolutely. And uh, me and my girlfriend, we travel every year, multiple times. I've been kind of all around the world in the last few years. Um, at least one big trip a year, if not two. And a big part of that is just because I have the cash flow to do it because of the way I set it up on the back end. Yeah, so. if you're away on the first, blink, 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 blink. Exactly. The rents are coming in. Exactly. But you got to set it up in the first place. So are you going to buy more? Yeah, absolutely. So my kind of plan for this year is to take this year as a slow year and, and build some more cash flow up again. And to be honest, I want a little bit of a break from the rentals because it's basically been four years <laughs> or three years straight now of, of doing that. Um, so I just kind of want a little mental break and I want to sell and enjoy. Your girlfriend it. wants a break. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, she, she's a lawyer, so she works a, she works a lot too. So that's uh well, that's We have all to have her there. on if she's a lawyer. There we go. Maybe she'll have to come next time. Right. Do you <laughs> refer clients to her? I don't actually. So she doesn't do property law, oh, okay. believe it or not. Uh, well, that's I think cause... she would be bored. She does labor and employment law mostly oh, okay. and a little bit of criminal as well. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that, that could be... Interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So my goal is take it easy this year and get some more cash flow going. And then in 2021, um, probably buy another investment or do a flip, one or the other, either like a short term, a flip for some quicker cash or a long term plan of um, the investment property. So rentals. do you think do you think flips are like it's on TV? <laughs> I think they portray them uh, pretty poorly on TV overall. But um, I oh. think people people like the shows and, you know, they're entertaining to watch. But um they're not always a perfect representation of really what no, it's, they're not what at all. Is, right? Like, call me. <laughs> they're not at all. Like, it's all glorified. Yeah, absolutely. They, yeah, no, it's uh, for TV purposes. Just right? get somebody to follow you around for the day, and they'll figure oh, out what it's really like. Man, <laughs> they don't want to. They after an hour, they'd give up. Yeah, absolutely, quit. I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah. So, do you? Uh, I get a question. Some people are been to the big, fifteen units, the twenty five units, the yeah. forty units, or would you rather? have maybe 20 triplexes? Yeah, so I think um, I think a big part of it depends. I think obviously you want the best numbers you can get financially. So in other words, if you can get it to cash flow, then that's great. Uh, I think there's really two avenues you can go. I think there's um, kind of short term, the property cash flows, or there's long term, it breaks even, but it's in an area that should grow. Um, in terms of value over the years. So like in Halifax, for example, anything on the peninsula, it's really hard to get properties that cash flow well, but you can get them to break even. And then basically from there, you're banking on long-term Yeah, um, that's, value that's my next question. Does it have to? See, I don't care. Yeah. I'm in the mindset, if I can break even after everything, yeah. I'll buy everything. Well, they're, they're paying down your mortgage, right? So yes. if you have a property for five years, and let's say at the end of that mortgage term, um, it's going to be paid off 40 grand. Well, if somebody's in there paying the mortgage and all the expenses are breaking even, then you just gain 40 grand in five years, right? There's not a lot of investment vehicles you can use yeah. to make so that gain. In 15 years, 20 years, I want $4 million. Yeah. There you go. I can get there by owning 12 triplexes. Yeah. Right? Yep. Yeah. How much, uh, those are just rough numbers. Yep. But how many RSPs would I have to buy and contribute to monthly to get there? A lot. A lot. <laughs> a lot. It would take a lot. And, I'd be working and there's three no jobs. guarantee it would even happen, right? Yes. That's the That's the thing. So, um, you know, the big thing is you talked about, do you want a bunch of smaller ones or a bigger one? Um, you know, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. I think it's... I know what it, I think. It, it's what people want. I think the big part is the financials and if they work. And what you see a lot is, I've had some investor clients do this recently of maybe they have, you know, 20 units spread out over six properties, let's say. Yeah. And they might sell them all, liquidate them, and then buy kind of their big, their big cash cow type yeah. property and they'll buy a 20 unit. And I think a big part of that is just... Um, you know, do you manage it yourself? How many units do you want to manage yourself? Do you have a property manager? What are the rates looking like there? Um, my father actually owns an apartment building down uh, just out an hour outside of does, Halifax. Does he like it? 
Uh, he loves it, um, but it can be a headache at some time, and they manage it themselves, him and a business oh, partner. Cheap. To so me, you got to get a property manager. It's, it's a lot. He has, I think it's 58 units, and they're building another one. Oh, they're, so they're new units. Uh, so what, they were about 15 years ago, so they're still relatively new. Um, and then they're building another building around the corner from there. Um, they just broke ground on it recently. So, But they manage it themselves. To me, that's a lot of work. I yep. wouldn't want to do it, um, but it, it just depends, right? He, he loves it, and uh, it works for him, So, and the numbers work well. Yeah, so if you're dealing with some tenants, they get fighting for yep. whatever reason. Who knows? The world's the world. Yeah. Uh, they can't pay the rent. Whatever. Yeah. You're dealing with them. Yeah. You go out for supper yeah. Friday night, yeah. downtown Halifax, yeah. and who's sitting at the table across from you? The people you're just <laughs> dealing with. Yeah. So now you're working again. Yeah. You're dealing with those tenants, and yeah. you're supposed to be out, and then your wife's annoyed. Why are you working? <laughs> well, I can't help it. They're sitting right there. Yeah. So a property a manager, when you never meet the tenants, yeah. is worth its weight in gold to me. Yep. When I want to take off, which is not very often, I want to be off. So, and in reality, the thing is with rental properties is if there's a problem in the property, like let's say, you know, the hot water tank leaks or, you know, the stove stops working or whatever it might be, that is never happening in between the hours of nine to five, Monday to Friday. It's only ever happening on Sunday on a long weekend. Or Thursday night, you're reading but my right mind. before a long weekend, right? It's just Murphy's Law. It's the way it works. Um, I actually I manage a couple properties for clients of mine, and I'm very selective of them. Um, I want ones that are very low maintenance, you know, very, um, you know, more like savvy type tenants. Yeah. Um, you know, like I manage one that's down by Dalhousie University. That's two profs and their and their kid that live there with them. It's a really gorgeous house, all renovated, and it's it's no big work, right? Like a lot, like nothing's breaking because it's all renovated. But it's not that the things are breaking on those long weekends and Friday nights and Saturday nights. Yeah. What it is, is those people, the tenants, they're like everybody else. They're yeah. working. They're tired. Absolutely. So they wake up Saturday morning and they're bored. What can I do? Oh, you know what? Yeah. The handle on my stove is loose. Yeah. The hot water doesn't quite kick in right. Yeah. So I'm going to call him right now. Absolutely. And they all call on the yeah. weekends. Absolutely. Like, and it's an emergency because they feel they need to portray that to yeah. get it done. So you're dealing with I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> it's Murphy's Law. It's the it's, way that it, it I don't always deal with works it. out. Now, my thought is owning, I guess, when you get 15 years from now, you have some equity in properties. Yep. Yeah. And you own one 48 unit. Yep. Yeah. You're in, you're, you're in or you're out on that. Like, you own the 48 unit or you don't. Yep. Yeah. So that you don't. That's where I don't like. Yeah. I'm not saying I wouldn't own a bunch of, but I I prefer, and somebody can come on here and tell me why yeah. I'm wrong. I don't care. Well, I'd like to hear it. <laughs> and maybe you can tell me. But if you own 20 triplexes, yep. if I want to sell one a year, yeah, absolutely. I can. Yep. Yeah, you know, and then you're not, you're not getting killed uh, by the by taxes every time you do it as well. Not as bad anyway. I think another way to look at it too is if you own a bunch of smaller ones across multiple different marketplaces within the market that you're investing in. Yes. Um, you get different value increases in different areas. So like to me, let's say you own a 30 unit in one area. And for some reason, that area is just starting to decline value-wise. But overall, like maybe the market in Halifax is not declining, which right now it's not. Oh, you guys are booming. But let's say you bought one and that specific area is kind of starting to, to dwindle, but other areas are thriving. Well, it's nice to know that you have it spread out amongst a few different areas and you're not going to get crushed if, if one kind of loses value here and there, right? Yeah, exactly. That's how I feel. So some areas boom. Uh, what happens occasionally if you own enough of them? The government will come and say, we want this land for this, or yeah. a developer will come and say, I want all these five. So sometimes you can cash in if you have multiples. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but I, I'm not against the, the you know what, I, uh, if I'm going to have a 48 or 60 unit or whatever, I would like it to be new, like your dad. Yeah. Because yeah. the old ones, I call them the fish fry buildings. Yeah. Because if one person cooks fish, they're <laughs> all eating fish. Yeah, it's like, a classic. They smell like yeah. fish, every one of them. Yeah. So I just, it's not my favorite thing, those old you know. Yeah, and I think I think when a lot of people invest, too, they look at all the big things. They look at the roof windows, you know, the furnace, uh, yeah. you know, things like that. And obviously, that's important. Um, but I think a lot of people who are not super involved with it, or not super experienced with it, really overlook how much the little things add up over the years, yeah. and how much maintenance it requires to manage a property that's you know eighty years old or however old it is. Well, you uh, we talk about this. It's sacrifice. It's work. Yeah. So if I wanted four million, five million in RSPs in twenty years, yeah, whatever, just throwing a number out there, I'd need three jobs. Yeah, this owning uh, rental property is not 
stress-free. Yeah. It is a job. Maybe it's not three jobs, but it's a job. You're going to have little headaches sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. And you're going to have repairs. But are you coaching, yeah, like, or not coaching, but your clients, are you helping them do what you're doing? Yeah, absolutely. So I actually had a past client call me um, last week and I met with them and they were thinking about selling their single family house they bought five years ago. And there would be, they'd be like early 30s. Um, they're looking at selling that and buying some kind of investment property, living at one, renting the other. So I kind of met with them and chatted about what they're looking for and, and so on. They live in a real nice family neighborhood. They have three kids and they all go to the school there, so on and so forth. So they kind of asked me like how we want to get into the investment market. And we don't really care necessarily how. We just want to make I love a hearing this. move. Yeah. Right? Um, and for them, the big thing was, you know, how should we go about it? So I kind of broke down. I kind of gave them like a value of what I think their house is worth now. And they have really great equity in there, which is awesome. And I kind of gave them some options of, um, you know, you could leverage what you have. You could refinance what you have to get some cash to play with on a purchase of an investment property. You could sell your property and buy one that has two units in it. So maybe a two-story house with a basement apartment, for example. And that'll kind of get you started. And then in four or five years, you can go from there again. Um, you could rent the property they have now and buy another one. So then they have three But everybody's units. situation is going to be different. So you sit with yes, them. Absolutely. And... Uh, and and go over it with them. Is there a charge for that? If somebody wants to sit with you and talk no, it's them? the same idea. It's just like a standard listing appointment, right? So there's no uh, no extra charge. I mean, I could talk about this stuff all day. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I truly enjoy it. So I have no problem with kind of pointing people in the right direction and and stuff like that. And it's something that now, I mean, I'm 29, so a lot of my clients are around that same kind of age range as me. And now I'm just kind of you know five years ago, most of my clientele didn't have the money to do these types of things. They just yeah. didn't, right? Um, but now I kind of am getting people that they've lived in a condo or lived in a, a small house and that's their first house they bought. And now they're moving on to, you know, exploring those avenues of yeah. investing. So it's really made my business really enjoyable because obviously I really like well, that, you, you did that side of the business, right? And I yeah. did it. I have experience with it. I've done pretty much every rental you can imagine in yeah. terms of the grand scheme of renovating yeah. a house. Um, so it's something that I'm not scared of and it's yeah. I'm definitely knowledgeable in coaching them how to do it. When you renovated, do you do you know who these guys are? Heard of them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we use them all the time. Yeah. So our sponsor, Schluter System, I have to get it in. <laughs> but we use them on almost every house. Nice. So they're waterproofing, shower yep. system, in-floor heat, all that stuff. Yep. Yeah, so we, we use them a lot. Have you, you haven't used them? I have not used you them personally. You have to now. You have I, to. I will have to. I'm going to take the mug with me and I'll have to use them. <laughs> we need <laughs> those. We need those there, mugs. There's another one I'm on the shelf. That's all right. <laughs> they sent us though. Actually, we're doing a fun thing right now. We're giving a whole bunch of stuff away. Yes, or yes, you could you can take the mug. <laughs> I'm big on the Maritimes, East Coast. Yeah, I find it's the new cool thing. People and yeah. all over Canada are moving yeah. here. I love it. New Brunswick, I think Halifax Absolutely. is even doing better than us. But yep, yeah. Moncton's it's p people from out west are it's. We're beautiful people here. Yeah, absolutely. The way of life is so nice. Yeah, absolutely. So in Halifax last year, we saw, I believe, don't quote me on this, I believe we were the second largest population growth of any city in Canada right behind Vancouver, which is kind of hard to believe when you consider Toronto, yeah. Calgary, some other cities, right? I think there's a lot of reasons for that. We're a university town. We get a lot of people come in for We university. have lobster. There you go. We have good lobster. We're <laughs> by the ocean. So people come for university. And they can afford housing there. They can still get good jobs. And I think they see that as an opportunity as opposed to maybe a bigger city like Toronto or Vancouver. And it's like, well, how do I even survive there, right? Yeah. And they're making more money, obviously, but it's it's all relative. Um, and I think a lot of people, I'm seeing this a lot in my client base, is a lot of people who maybe they moved to Toronto or Vancouver for work 10 years ago um, from Halifax. And maybe they're coming home Same with now, us. right? So they're coming home. They move there. They're made. They did really well with work. They move up the ladder. They made good money. They bought a house for four hundred fifty, and now magically it's worth one point two million. And they're cashing in on that. And they're coming home. And they're they're, yeah. they're settling their roots. And maybe their kids are young. And they're kind of, you know, going. Maybe they're forty years old or so. And they're kind of getting that forever home for their family. And what they can get for their bang for buck. Um, is great in Halifax compared to a Toronto or Vancouver. So we're seeing a lot of that too, yeah, which I think too. is a big reason why. Well, you can own a really nice family home here for 200000 Absolutely. Like yeah. 200 that's like 1200 bucks a month payment. Yeah, exactly. You can have a duplex for 150 180 Yeah. Cash flows, you're building equity. Yeah. But if you come to New Brunswick, what's your favorite place for tourism? 
Where where do you go? Uh, I like Fredericton personally. Um, I got some personal ties there from years ago. Sorry to say. No, it. no, Jesse. That's on. Yeah. On. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's, yeah so, um, she's gonna love this. I like that beer garden they have there. It's nice, you know. Um, so I've I had some family living there for for years and years. Um, I don't get up there as much anymore, but I really I like Fredericton. Um, and I used to visit friends that um, well, they have good lakes up there as well. Yeah, the beer exactly. garden. Yeah. So if you're coming into Brunswick, go there. If we go to Nova Scotia, what do we got to do? Oh, you got to go downtown to the waterfront for yeah, sure. Halifax. Yeah, and the beer like the our vibe in Halifax now is is awesome. The culture's really um, progressed over the last few yeah. years. It's really like a big local push. A lot of local breweries, restaurants, and it's really cool to see the city kind of. Jump on board. Yeah, Halifax is beautiful in the summertime. Even in the yeah. winter, it's it's a nice city to walk around. It's in. nice, but it's definitely a nice summer to follow. Summer, yeah, summer that, that's when you want to go. You got the busker, <laughs> the ships come in. Like yeah. there's so many things to do. Okay, so how do uh, I'm in? I'm a person in Halifax. Yeah, I'm thinking about buying, selling, or or do getting into uh, multi-unit rentals, yeah. whatever. How do we get a hold of you? Ah, so social media is great these days. I get a lot of calls and stuff through there. Uh, how, do, how do you spell your name again? Yeah, Stevens with a PH. <laughs> so it's Andrew dot Team Stevens with a PH is the handle on Instagram. Um, Insta- just, isn't Instagram incredible? Like it it's is. like the way of the future. Instagram. That's is how crazy. we connected. So yes. there you go. Right. It is. This is the way of the future. I get a lot of inquiries through there, um, just about buying and selling in general, um, and a lot of people will kind of. They'll screen me on social media before they end up oh. calling just to try and see. That's what why I'm nobody calls me. They screen <laughs> me on social media. <laughs> well, you have teeth again. Now, <laughs> yeah. so that's, that's a real. That's a real solid. Like, I have. A, you know what? It was. I lost my teeth, and it's like I'm going to go a week like this. What do I do? I yeah. might as well own it. Yeah, you might. You I might as well, as well own exactly. It. And we talked about earlier video, just being yourself and whatever. But it got me a lot of, a lot of activity you know whatever <laughs> but i have my teeth now i can take them out just, no <laughs> we can leave them in for now so if you're in halifax they can contact you you want your phone number out there website yeah absolutely so phone number is 902-471-0795 and then you can find me on all the social media as well or you can just google team stevens and it'll pop right up team on. stevens yeah s-t-e-p-h-a-n-e-s e e a s n s S T E P H E N S. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. There you go. Well, you have to come back. Absolutely. So that sounds good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm gonna check. You know, I'm gonna make sure I find out if you do more. You said you're gonna do more rentals. I wanna find out. There we go. Okay. I'll, I'll I'll always post it. Super.